Welcome back to Sub-Zero Hero, the FM21 adventure where we're trying to take a team from the bottom of Norwegian football to the top, using nothing but our own youth intakes. And after our last episode, we knew that nothing else other than back-to-back -back wins in our next two games were necessary to leave us in with a chance of qualifying for European competition going into today's game. The question is, did we manage to get the wins that we needed? Place your bets now. So no would be the short answer and probably the one that most of you bet on. We couldn't win both of our last two games, but we did play pretty well in both. We'll show you how we got on in a moment. As it turns out, it wouldn't have mattered anyway. We were relying on Champions Rosenborg winning the cup final so that an extra European qualification spot was awarded to the fourth place team in the league. As it turned out, Mulder, who was scrapping for survival near the foot of the table, they were reduced to 10 men and still managed to beat Rosenberg anyway, so it didn't even matter in the end. It means that for the end of the season, we are going to be finishing in sixth place in the league. We've still got a game to play, but even if we win it, it's not going to be enough to climb up to fifth in the table. And when we inevitably lose it, it's not going to mean that we drop to seventh either. So sixth place is going to be our finish compared to our 10th place finish last season. I guess you'd say that's progress. Potentially with a win, we could finish on 47 points this season. Compare that to 37 from last year. And I guess, again, you'd say that we're making progress. We've scored a few more, conceded a few less. In fact, in terms of our goal scoring, we're looking pretty competitive. Only the top three have outgunned us this season. It's at the other end where we're struggling. Only four teams in this division have conceded more than us. We are fragile. We are vulnerable from defensive set pieces. And we have conceded 13 penalties this season, which have definitely cost us both points and goals. If we catch you up on how we've done in the last couple of games, well, after that 2-1 defeat to Bode Glimpse, where I think I was to blame, really, for trying to chase a winner when I probably should have been settling for a draw, we then had the next instalment of the Derby game against Trompsa. We took the lead in this game. We managed to get ourselves a goal from an attacking corner that Trond Agner Bratton fired past the keeper. But our old foe, Oscar Agger do 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 with a great little finish, tied the game and it finished 1-1. And then we had a game against Bran, which was probably the tougher of the two fixtures. But in this one... We attacked pretty well in this game. Hartvigsen got us off to an early lead, but unfortunately he went off injured just a few minutes later. We had to reshuffle a little bit. They equalised, but then in the last 10 minutes we were able to put another two goals on our tally. Schoenerson and Emper scoring for us. And even though they've edged the match stats and they've got the, the better XG from that game, we walked away with a 3-1 victory and we were pretty pleased with it. It means that today we have got a game against Odd. And Odd are battling for relegation themselves. They need a win to try and overtake Mulder at the bottom of the table. At the end of last season, we were playing a team on the last day of the season that was scrapping for relegation and that did not go well for us. It could well be the same today, but before we even get to that fixture... We have got youth intake news. So the head of youth development is presiding over his first youth intake. Now, there's no talk of golden generations here, but there's plenty of encouraging words in his memo to us. First of all, he says there are a healthy number of new fullbacks in the pipeline. Well, praise be to the FM gods, because I've not had a good fullback through in a decade at this. This is what we desperately need to help us get to the next level. He goes on to say at least two of our fullbacks have plenty of promise. That's a left back and a right back. Well, we are in business. They also say one of the wingers looks like a handy prospect. Fingers crossed it's a left winger. Could do with one of those. We have two forwards who are considered to be fine prospects. So it looks like we've got players all around the park coming through. And then this is the bit that is sung to me 
by a heavenly choir of angels. We have one good, young, it's a youth intake, I would assume that they're young, Russian left back who has caught the eye. Now, I don't know why we're recruiting players from Russia, but a left back is the answer to our prayers. And overall, this is an excellent group of players coming through. Couple of forwards, couple of fullbacks, and a winger. This looks promising. We're going to need these extra players in to bolster our ranks because without better youth players coming through, we've kind of hit our ceiling. We need players coming through the likes of Trondag, Nabratna, and Martin Deuce and Ibsen. We need a team full of those. If we're going to go and challenge for honours, this looks like promising youth intake. Now remember, on top of this, our training facilities are currently being developed and will be ready just before this youth intake arrive so that we can hopefully help them realise their potential. So that's how things are looking for next season. We've just got one final thing to do, and that's play our final game of this. So here we go then, final day of the season, and the squad is ravaged with injuries and crippled by suspension. So we are just going to go for it. We're going to play a 4-2-4 for today's game, pushing the wide players further up compared to our typical 4-4-2. We're going to start on an attack mentality, and we're just going to go out there and see if we can end the season with some goals. We're going to be playing Tron Dagna Bratton today, even though he's out for a couple of days with a tight calf. He might not make it through the game, so we might have to bring on Adoy Hansen. We're going to be playing riding as an auxiliary left back, because gorgeous George suspended again. Riding's getting better at playing at left back, but he's still not convincing. He's going to have to do a job for us today. Hartvigson is just back from his own knock that he picked up in the last game. He scored in that last game, so hopefully he's back to his goal-scoring ways. Shurnison scored in that game as well. He's going to be out there as a pacey threat on the right wing. We're going to be playing little tiny emps up front with Martin Dusand Ibsen, who today I'm going to play as a striker because as part of a two-man midfield, little Martin at five foot nine doesn't really play well back there. He wants to be a more attacking midfielder as part of a midfield three, which on plenty of occasions this season he has done. He's not been playing well towards the end of the season, but today we're going to push him up front as the advanced forward. He's pretty quick. He's got great mentals, including his flair, his decision-making, his vision and his work rate. His finishing is no worse than Hartvigson's, and Hartvigson is one of the top scorers in the division this season, so we're going to try little Martin out as a striker today. So we're going to go 4-2-4. We're going to try and outgun the opposition. Let's get out there and see how our young boys get on. OK, we're underway for the final time in Season 10. We are the away team for this game. Odd need a result. Otherwise, they're getting relegated. So they're going to be up for this game. We've got absolutely nothing to play for whatsoever. Neither a win nor defeat will make any difference to our league placing. We're playing for nothing but pride. And you know as well as I do, when you're playing one of these teams down the bottom of the division that need a result, they are often pretty tough games. Pedersen has come and claimed a corner. Can he set us on a counter-attack? I'd love a good performance at the end of the season just to put a positive spin on what has been a disappointing end to the campaign, if I'm honest. We have struggled with fitness. We've had a lot of suspensions and a lot of injuries. We've also capitulated a little bit as well. And I would have liked to have finished the season a little bit strong. But our high position in the table is mainly due to how we started the season. Certainly, it's very little to do with how we've played during the last eight to ten games or so. So we need a good finish. We've got riding. Doesn't want to be out there at left back. Deuce and Dibson doesn't particularly want to be out there as a striker, as he shows by having a clear sight of goal and scooping it over the bar. We've not started that well either, have we? Even though we're on the attack mentality, we've not really done a lot so far. And a quarter of the way through the game, we're into the highlights. We've got the ball. Could be our chance. Hartvigson returns it to riding. 
I'm hoping that as a quite attacking fullback, he might get up and put some crosses into the box rather than those rather terrible passes that he's just given straight to the opposition. So maybe this is going to be their highlight. Although we've won the ball back. Here's Hartvigsen. He's not fully fit, but he's through. He's given it to Emper. Not always a lethal finisher from that distance, old Emps. And he has basically passed one back to the keeper. We're on the 30-minute mark now. Only two shots in the entire game. Odd have definitely had the better of it. And they have got an attacking throw-in that Shurnison has volleyed clear. Here's little Martin. Didn't look convincing there, did he? Maybe I've made a bit of an error of trying to play him as a striker. I was just trying to force as many of our good players into the team as possible. And they have gone through and had an effort that struck the side netting. We're now coming up to the 40 minute mark. And I think you're going to say that's not been a great first half of football. A goal now would put a completely different spin on it. For us, that is not for them. But it's them that's got the ball. Goodness me, we've come forward again. And it's not actually going to be our highlight, is it? We've got oh, Norum Danielson, who's in the team today because the two players that start ahead of him well, one suspended and one's injured. He's already booked and he's lunging into challenges. I'm thinking he's going to have to come off at half time. Maybe Deuce and Dibson drops back into midfield. And we find another option up front. Speaking of little Martin, there he is. He's fed Shurnison. It's not the greatest ball. It's fed him wide. And he can't even beat his man or get a ball into the box anyway. <laughs> well, we've won an attacking throw in. That's probably the best prize we've had so far in this first half. Not a great little performance. Time to give the boys their customary half-time dressing down. We're going to see you for the second half of the final game of our season. And away we go for the second half. We've made a substitution. We've brought very young Hakan Skugdal on. He's going to play as a striker for us. And we have dropped Deuce and Dibson back into the midfield. That was a little experiment that maybe... Should never be repeated. Skogdal still only 16. Very quick. A little bit raw. But some more game time is not going to do him any harm at all. And seeing as this game is not vital to where we finish in the season. It's good to get him a half of football. Odd have started the second half. Much as they left off in the first. Really dominating the play. We're thumping the ball forward. We've got a six foot seven target man. Pedersen decides no. Play it forward to the young 16-year-old who's only five foot nine instead. His distribution, still not the greatest strength of his game. Here is Skugdal. He's got it to Borg. He's got it to Shurnison. Can we get a ball into the box this time? No. Now we can. And Empa, there he is. Now he shows the value of actually playing aerial balls into the target, man. He's powered ahead of past the keeper. I've got to say, he has looked at times like he could be developing into a pretty good striker now. His attributes are not stunning. He doesn't make good progress every month. But he's slow and steady. He's getting better, stronger, airily more dominant. He now places the ball past the keeper as well, which is useful. And I think next season he's still going to be the main man for us up front. So we're now in the lead. But we're going to carry on attacking. I want more goals on this last game of the season. Shurnison has won the ball back for us. He's got little Skogdal up with him and it's his chance. Oh, and he struck the post and it's rolled across the face of the goal. And the youngster could have got his first goal for the club. But he was denied by the woodwork. The corner's gone in and now we've got riding on the ball. He sent it over. Skogdal's gone again. And it has gone out for a goal kick. At least we are going to say this is a little bit more of a good account of ourselves than we were showing in that first half. We're up to 63 minutes now. I think it's time. Couple more fresh legs on the pitch to see us through to full time. Okay, final two substitutions are made. and We've gone with two more youngsters. We've brought Heidecker on for Bratton who is injured and is struggling with his performance. And we've also brought Paul Runnigan into midfield, as Kim Heron wasn't having his best game either. It's only 1-0. We would like a little bit more than this. 
and we've got a highlight. Emper's holding up the ball. He's got it to Skogdahl, who seems to have been pretty heavily involved since he came on. And Hartvigson didn't look like the cleanest strike he's ever hit. But he's got us a second goal. And now, now we're looking a little bit more comfortable. Emper gets the ball to Skogdahl. Deuce and Ibsen's involved, spreads the play. Shernison rolls it across the box. And maybe that looked like a bit of a deflected effort. But Hartvigson does look good when he's drifting in from that left-hand flank. And now I think Odd have had enough. It looks like they're getting relegated. And we have evened up the match stats. Good second half performance. We did make a couple of tweaks at half time. Started to play with a little bit more tempo and play even wider than we were. And I think that might have helped us just be a little bit more penetrative and a little bit more clinical. In this second half, I'd have had a couple of chances, though, towards the end, to be fair to them. Ref, I think, I think we're all done now. Heidek has come on as a centre-half for us, by the way. I think he's going to struggle to get into our midfield, perhaps. So maybe if he's going to make it at this club, centre-half will be his position. But he's not trained very well in the latter half of the season. And whether he's going to make it as a first-team player... I'm not convinced. We're coming forward one final time. We're over the allotted injury time. We're slinging the ball in. Hartvigsen's got to be a mile offside, I think. He is. He hits the post anyway. And there is a season done. Ten in total of Sub-Zero Hero now. And that was a decent second half. The first half, not great. But the second half, certainly a lot better. So there we are. Six places I finished, one point behind Trompser. Still a fair old way off third place. We're going to have to improve a lot if we're going to get European football next season. But let's be honest, that's got to be the goal, hasn't it? We're going to come back for our next campaign, season 11. And we want a top four finish. We want European football and we want a cup run as well. Because let's face it. Winning a cup could be our best chance of being sub-zero heroes.